Okay, I'm good now. I want to say welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you coming out for a nice day for a change. It's not raining, not cloudy, not wind blowing. The sun shines. So appreciate that. Before you have an agenda, move to approve. Yeah. And I have no changes. So sorry. That's okay. Is there any discussion on the agenda? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We're up to recognitions. Yes, Billy. All right, I've got several people to um, I want to recognize. I was able to attend the fair sale, and we actually had four beef donated to the school district. Uh, Criticus Land LLC donated one and a half beef. Thunder Basin Coal donated one. Marlon and Mary Geyer donated half. And J and H Oil and Gas, which is Jared and Haley Hansen, donated a beef. Um, also, Grace Sandrini, um, she put our little, I'll call it a flyer, in the sale ad um, that CeeLo put together. And then Justin and Zanny Rich, they housed the beef for the weekend until they were hauled to Torrington for us. Thanks. Thank you. Any other recognitions? I'd like to recognize our <laughs> student, rep. student rep. Casey, would you you want to introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about yourself? You have to push the little green button. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Casey Matthews. I'll be a senior this year. Uh, not really much else, I guess. I'll just try to be here for most meetings. It's like I'm pretty new to the community, but so far it's been really tight and really accepting. And I'm really appreciative of, appreciative of that. Okay. So thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And welcome. Yes. Are there any other recognitions? Seeing none, we'll move on. Visitors comments. Stan, you're you're on the docket. Is it on? The screen, Byron. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Chairman Breslin for uh putting me on the agenda. Didn't take long, we'll see how trained I am. <laughs> I come in peace. <laughs> um, so uh, last uh, school board meeting, um, there was a section of the handbook uh, that was addressed and uh, dealing with uh, uh, drug uh, searches, drug testing, dogs and all that. And uh, when I was here and I heard it, uh, you know, I, I just thought, I don't know, a lot of things jumped to my mind and I thought that I wanted to address it. And what I'm going to say a lot of what I'm going to say here today is different than what I thought I was going to say. Because I, I went into, did some research on uh, search and seizures for our public schools. And uh, and I found um, that the Supreme Court, New Jersey versus TLO, um, says that uh, the Fourth Amendment ban on unreasonable searches and seizures applies to school searches but school officials do not require probable cause or a search warrant before searching students. Instead, school officials only need reasonable su suspicion before searching a student. Reasonable suspicion, and they're talking about mandatory activities, okay, not non-mandatory activities. Reasonable suspicion means that there is reasonable grounds before the search begins. For suspecting that a search will reveal evidence, that the student has violated school rules or the law and the search is reasonable related to circumstances justifying the search. Though school officials only need reasonable suspicion to search, note that the law enforcement officials, such as police officers invited in onto school grounds, need probable cause, just as it would require any other situation. Neither reasonable suspicion nor probable cause is required if the student consents. And school officials are not required to advise students that they may refuse this consent. 
Though the Supreme Court has not ruled on the issue, at least one federal appeals court has held that it is acceptable to tell the students that failure to consent will lead to a disciplinary action against the student. Beyond the search itself, the manner of the search must be reasonable. A reasonable search is one that is not excessively intrusive in light of a student's age, sex, or relatively uh, seriousness. And what they want go on to talk about here is actually strip searching. Uh, it's uh, not allowed for a lot of other reasons. Uh, permitted school searches. No justification for a search is required under the Fourth Amendment unless the person subject to the search has a reasonable expectation of privacy in the item being searched. Even when it, even when an item is issued to a student for her use, if the item belongs to the school, then the student has no expectation of privacy for the use of that item. And they use uh, school lockers as an example. Um, and the student has no reasonable expectation of privacy in the locker, a fact which the court recognizes in the TLO case. Now this addresses non-mandatory activities, sports and such. The Supreme Court has treated general searches of the entire school population more leniently than individual searches. While a search of a particular student requires a reasonable suspicious, suspicion justifying the search, the court has allowed drug testing without suspicion when the testing is given to all students who choose to participate in a non-mandatory activity, such as playing football on the school team. Thus, the requirement of a urine test before participating in school sports is permissible. The court also found that it is permissible to require all students who wanted to participate in extracurricular activities such as choir or academic quiz competition to take a urine test for drugs. In both of these decisions, the school did not have any particular suspicion of any individual, but all students who choose to participate in the activity were subject to the search. The board placed significant in weight on the fact that the students chose to participate in these extracurricular activities and these activities were not mandatory. If the student did not want to undergo a urine test, the student can forgo, forgo these extracurricular activities. And then uh, uh, finally, some very general searches are considered non-intrusive so as not to require any particular suspicion to be reasonable. These are called administrative searches. To qualify as an administrative search, the procedure must be directed at a general danger, such as keeping firearms out of school and be non-intrusive. Okay, so uh, that surprised me. And, uh, but uh, um, obviously when you have a choice to take part in something and that uh, requirement for that is to be drug-free, tobacco-free, alcohol-free, then that's on the student. Um, uh, so I just, so I wanted to say that, uh, and they also address dogs. You can bring dogs in to, you know, I, I to like a non-activity type situation and uh, search. So this gives the school huge power. Uh, and um, I think my only appeal would be that it be used uh, with discretion. Uh, don't punish everybody for one person's. In, in the case of a sports, like say a football team or whatever, if it, for my understanding, there should be reasonable expectation that this is widespread in a team before a drug dog or, you know, uh, that type of situation comes in. It should be widespread. It should be understood. Um, I, I only say uh, particularly on that is uh, that if we're serious about helping our students, because what we're talking about is addiction, okay? And uh, and if we're worried, if we're concerned about helping our students, then this is radical. But my opinion is I wouldn't suspend this student. I would suspend the activity. And I would put it on the onus on the team that unless you clean yourself up, you will not play. Uh, so, and the, so I'm just going to go on to say that uh, uh, zero tolerance has never known to work. If if it worked, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. Uh, back in uh, in my junior and senior year of high school, uh, we. Uh, they they put a smoking room in our high school for students because we were smoking in the in the bathrooms to the extent that we were lighting trash cans on fire and that type of thing. 
also the state of Massachusetts in my in my junior year changed the drinking age from 21 to 18. So it shows you what time and geographics and miles and, and cultures at one point seem uh, okay with, and then at another point become uh, a toxic situation. So I would only say that this is a um, societal problem that students in school, uh, they are shouldn't be treated like criminals. They may have been broken a law or whatever, but they're not criminals. Um, and what it says about uh, the American, um, the, um, sorry. the American Bar Association says this about zero tolerance. Due process has little to say about the substance of the punishment imposed. Recently, so-called zero tolerance policies imposing mandatory suspensions or expulsion for certain violations have flourished. They have been... These have been rightly criticized for failing to match with the reality of adolescence development because teenagers typically make mistakes on their way to adulthood. However, the Supreme Court held in Ingram versus Wright that the Eighth Amendment protection from cruel and unusual punishment does not apply in a school setting. Proportionally, in school discipline, therefore, depends on the inclinations of local school authorities. So, uh, and I'm, I, I'm going to move on this a little bit. So uh, I'd only ask too, and I wonder if you're giving the same uh, attention to performance enhancing drugs, uh, PEDs, uh, steroids, stimulants, um, growth hormones, which the National Institute for Health li li uh, National Library says between one and 12% of high school boys and 0.5%, 3% of girls report use of anabolic steroids with the highest rates found in male athletes competing in football, wrestling, and weightlifting. I would hope that you're giving the same attention to these because these are illegal. These are controlled three substances, and I could list them, but I'm running out of time. So I'm hoping you're giving the same attention to this that you are to all the other drugs because these drugs have adverse effects uh, they uh, edema. It, they can be psychological. A lot of them. I'm not going to take the time to read them, but I have the information for you. So I would only hope that you give that attention to this. I, I'm just going to say that, uh, like I said, uh, my my concern as far as addiction and drugs in school would be the person that's not in a high profile, the quiet person, person that slips on the radar. They are out of trouble. Their homework's never in. Can't stay awake in school. Um, and they're on the outside because they're either going through withdrawal or they're under the influence. And drug testing with the pot that we have nowadays, um, if a person smokes a pot like 10 o'clock the night before they come to school, they're going to test positive. So, uh, And so I, I'm, I'm going to end by this because I don't know how long I get, but I think I'm going a little long. So... I know about what I'm talking about because in um, my high school years, I never, I never took a sober breath in school. Okay, um, every day that I went to school, I was under the influence of something because I was a person that suffered from addiction. And you're not going to stop somebody from that suffers from addiction from using by scaring them, by penalizing them, by ostracizing them by kicking them out of school for a year, because that's going to increase their addiction. Education and understanding is the way to deal with it. Um, so in 1989, when I graduated high school, I was, 70, I was 73, I was 18, obviously. In 1989, I came to a point in my life where I put down alcohol and substances that were killing me. I've been sober for 34 years. Um, and in that time, I learned a lot about addiction. And what I'm here to say today is I would offer to be the, to the school board, to the faculty, to sit and explain addiction in a way that you may have never heard before, in a way that's very comprehensible. Um, and I'd also be willing to do that at a, at a, um, uh, what the heck do they call them? Uh, you know, uh, assembly 
And I talked to uh, Superintendent LaCroix about what I'm talking about here, if he feels and that there's a way that I could be used. My I've worked with uh, substance abuse, and, and I don't have a degree. My degree came from uh, life. But for 34 years, I've worked with a lot of people with alcohol problems and substance abuse problems. Um, and I've run 12-step programs. I run it here. In Newcastle, matter of fact. So I just want to thank you. I just want to say that uh, just saying no doesn't work. Being scared straight won't work. Uh, refusing people to bring drugs to school is not going to work. The only thing that's going to work is education. And I'm not advocating for drug use. Believe me, I'm totally against it. But that's because of me. It has nothing to do with alcohol. I don't smoke either, but I used to smoke, be a chain smoker. And if I was going to smoke, I wouldn't suck on one of those pipes. <laughs> those vape tubes like that's just not going to cut it and i guarantee you that there's adults in these schools that if they are smokers they're smoking during the school day because it's an addiction and what's the first thing adults do once they're addicted to tobacco if a stressful situation happens grab for a cigarette right it relaxes you same thing with children they're coming here addicted to tobacco and other substances and one of the first things they want to grab for is is there tobacco or the vaping? I don't know anything about, just like I don't know anything about microbrews. <laughs> I got sober before they came on the scene. Uh, thank you. If you got any questions, um, yes, Anna. Thank you, Stan, and thank you for your offer to help. And I agree, New, New Jersey versus Taylor was a really, really interesting case law and Supreme Court decision. Um, what I want to share with you is uh, pnasurvey.org. In Wyoming data, you can look at the stimulant, steroid, that kind of uh, usage in Wyoming there. And it's it's actually a lot lower than drugs, alcohol. Right. So, but right. that's there. There's a lot of information there you'll find interesting. Thank you. And I bet heroin use in the school is very low too, but it's a drug. And if it was used, it'd be, uh, you'd, uh, you'd, uh, punish the person for it. Jason, did you have some? Yeah. Um so, can I turn your mic on? Thank you. Thank you. So with with the educational portion too, Stan, um in the handbook, every offense there is, they have to attend a tobacco alcohol uh educational program. Mm -hmm. So we so we do throw that in there as part of of said um uh thing there um another thing and um goes back to where you were saying um the way the law reads it just has to be reasonable suspicion um and i got to be careful how i say this because it's not in law enforcement capacity and it's not as a this is just me saying it. i like to think we hold ourselves to a little bit higher standard and we also add articulable 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 to that so just because you can isn't good enough you we all also have to articulate why yeah so right so yeah. that just adds that much more to it than just saying just because we can we can so right and in that instance i was more speaking about non-mandatory activities because you have total leniency to do whatever uh with that right um that but I was, uh that would be more due to just general po student population, right? Yeah, so thank you. Any right. other comments or questions? Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Very informative. Thank you. Are there any other visitors' comments? We'll move on to action items, consent agenda. <laughs> Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I meant to add this during recognition, but I'm going to say it now because it's in the consent agenda that I wanted to just say uh, thank you to Troy and the transportation. Oh. Thank you to Troy and the transportation committee for doing all the work on the bus routes. That information was really helpful. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on the consent agenda? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. In addition to the weekly printed version of the newsletter journal, we also promote our community and share important information on our award-winning website, newslj.com, and in our weekly email newsletter, Nuke Now. We also connect with readers through various social media platforms and invite you to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can even take a look at a recent meeting of the City Council, School Board, or County Commission on our YouTube channel. We do hope that you will go to newslj.com and subscribe today, and we look forward to making all of our great content available to you. But regardless of your level of support, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing your part to preserve a free and independent local press. We move on to the Athletics Activities Handbook. Brad, do you want to? I do have a recommendation. So in the packet, um, and this should also be under recognitions when you do it three or four times. So um, I would like to recognize Ms. Engel and Ms. Manders for their efforts, but I do believe in your handbook or in your packet is the handbook that um, I guess capsulates what the board's efforts were. So I would recommend the 2324 Athletics Activity Handbook as it is presented in your packet. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the 2023-2024 Athletics and Activities Handbook <laughs> as presented in our packet. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Carrie. Alicia. Thank you. I, I, I finally seen her behind uh, Angie, but that's okay. Um, we're asking for an executive session under 16.4-405 little x and 16.4-405 little ix for personnel and student issues. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded to go into executive session for the two reasons I already listed. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Go ahead. We'll move on to new business. Revisions of personal wages, Brad. Uh, Mr. Chair, in your packet, um, what I am recommending to you, and I, I can, I'll just take these one at a time. Um, and so both of these um, recommendations or all these recommendations are, are based on either a restructuring of the district office or truly where we are in a, a need of people with a CDL. Um, so my first recommendation that I have for you is um, for Taylor Borgelli, and it's the new position is for um, HR director and federal funds. And I would recommend that position to you with the duties um, in your packet and that position would start off at seventy thousand dollars. Unless, unless anybody has objection, we could do them all together. Is that okay? All together, okay. Yeah, just... So moving on um, again, uh, and this one is 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 consistent with the district office, and so um, Angie under the business manager, and again, um, these are benefited. Um, positions. So the duties as listed there, and I would be very comfortable in letting everyone know and duties as assigned, since everyone else has that in their title, they should. And I would ask that Angie start that position at $75,000. Um, also, um, the next page in your packet, I would um, ask the board, um, so going to two positions in the district office, uh, with the accounts payable, uh, the board and superintendent secretary and accounts payable 
that we increase that to uh, a $3 increase for each step there. Uh, the next three requests are, are due to the CDL. So currently we are short uh, three to five bus drivers. So we will be asking um, all of our staff with the CDL um, to be doing their jobs on top of the other duties as assigned. So in the column of bus driver and uh, driver subs, I would ask the board for a $3 increase there. I would also ask um, that of the mechanics position, again, $3 for each step there, and also including the transportation assistant. And that would also include the transportation director. Um, and that increase goes from a seventy sixty one thousand dollars to sixty seven two forty, and I believe that's everything that I have at this time, Mr. Chair. Moved to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve that recommendation. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. <clears throat> And just for everyone's clarification, um, so downsizing, uh, that's not new money into the budget. Actually, it's saving budget positions because we're saving the number of positions and the benefit packages. Just so everybody knows, it's not changing the overall general fund budget. It's actually saving you money. And we all know that transportation is general fund reimbursable. I said that right, Angie, just for you. Um, so the money that we spend this year, you actually will get back next year. So those changes will reflect in that transportation budget, but then we'll come back to the district at 100% the year after that. But truly, if we don't come up with some drivers, we are going to have some crises with um, routes, which will affect attendance. And I don't know if that will get people's attention, but the big one's going to be on on your activity days when, you know, possibly the middle school has to stay at home because you only have enough drivers to get your high school kids to to culminate in events. So just so that's on everyone's radar. Um, that's what we're trying to fix there. Um, so anyone with a CDL, we are they will be to start the year, as you can see in the packet. They will be driving route buses to make sure students are at school. So when you call transportation in the morning, you're going to get CELO because there's no one there to answer the phone. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. So next um, item. Oh, oh I'm yeah. sorry. Certified resignation. Thank you. You're fine. Um, I was so excited to get to this one. It just um, drives me nuts. So uh, last week, I was so happy we were we were 100% staffed and ready to go. This week, I'm not as happy. So with that, I would recommend uh, the resignation of Marnie Hosfeld as the middle school Title I math teacher and art teacher and permission to post. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, move to approve the certified resignation of Marnie Hasfeld as a middle school Title I math and art teacher in position to and post the position. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. I would like to say that I move this with regret. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tough situation. Good yeah. good point. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Classified recommendation. Mr. Chair, I would recommend to you, um, and I only know her by Noni Bloom, and so in risk of not getting punched, I'm going to say Noni Bloom as a custodial for the outbuildings. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve Novella. Is that how you would say that? Bloom uh, for custodian of the outbuildings. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Could I have a 
a motion to amend the agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to amend the agenda for the recognition of homeschoolers. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, Mr. Chair, I recommend to the, no, no, I would recognize the homeschool request for Justin and Zany Rich for Kobe and Jace Rich. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve, recognize. Recognize. Those homeschoolers or homeschooling, whatever it is. Application. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We'll move on to administrator's report. We're going to start in the back of the room. Taryn, did you have anything? I guess you're the only one. I You're the only one I can see. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. I don't have much to report. Um, we had a really busy summer with summer school. Um, the elementary and middle school hosted sessions every Tuesday and Wednesday. So we had kids in the building all summer. Um, high school took those post-secondary tours. So kids were busy traveling and touring those facilities. And then they're back this week full time for Jumpstart, getting to know some of our new incoming kindergartners. So we're just hitting the ground running. Any questions for Taryn? Thank you. Sonia? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Does <laughs> this bother you, Bill? That's why they should sit at the team. Uh, just a few things that we're just getting geared up this week to welcome back everybody. And so we're going to kick off on Friday and just start a whirlwind of um, PD opportunities and classes and sessions and welcoming teachers back. So we will be doing that. Um, new teachers will start on Monday of next week. And so we will have nine right as of right now, anyway. Um, and I do in I gave you a handout there, and I would just like to extend a welcome and a reminder that on next Thursday, the 17th, is when we will have our keynote and welcome back. Um, session in the morning. So you're welcome to come. That starts at 830 in the morning. There's breakfast before that. And then what I also attached along with it, it's in that second page, is we will be having TAC 1 uh, back again this year. So that's our safety um, trainings that we typically do with staff. And we're going to do it with staff and students this year. Uh, and so you are welcome to join any um, of those sessions that are there as well. Uh, one that is different this year, just that I would kind of point out, is that we are going to do like an evening um, self-defense class. And as with everything, it's overlapping with many things. And so the middle school will be doing their back to school welcome, um, get to know parents, and we'll be doing this at the same time. So um, so not all staff are able to attend if they choose to, but this one is um, available. And if we, I've put staff kind of, there is a capacity, uh, um, like a max capacity for that training. So by next week, if we don't meet max, I'm going to open it up to the public. So just keep that in mind. So if you're interested or know of somebody who might be interested in doing a self-defense class, that may be an opportunity. Um I guess the other things really, we have uh, tomorrow the confidential accountability results get released to schools. So that's the one where every school will get a not meeting, meeting, or exceeding expectations. Um, and the public release will be on September 1st, is what we have said. So that will be coming within the next month. And um, lastly, as always, there's standards work going on. And so the first page that I gave you is some sessions that you can join if you're interested in listening about health, PE, uh, computer science, or fine and performing arts. Um, in your email, I also attach what those proposed standards are. The one that um, has caused a lot of discussion is the health standards. So there were some health standards that were added to the middle school and high school specifically around suicide prevention 
So um, you can take a look at the wording on that. And uh, there's surveys that you can give input on, or there's live sessions that you can join and to give input on that, because they are collecting public input on all four of those. Math and Science is about um, finished with their public input. Uh, we're revising a little bit, and then I'll meet next week on that. So other than that, just kind of in full swing. So that's all I have, unless you have questions for me. Any questions? Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Oh, Jason. Not, not, really, um, not really a question, but for the new board members, TAC 1, if you don't know what that is, I would highly recommend showing up and and going through that. Um, Joe Joe and his crew. So um, what's that? If, they, if you don't know what TAC 1 is. If you don't know what TAC 1 is, it's the active shooter yeah. training. Joe has a very extensive law enforcement background, went on his own to create this company, and he goes nationwide uh, and instructs teachers, um, students, how to move down hallways if there's an active shooter. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, so, real good. If, class if, class if, side yes, yes. Too. Plus, I'm able to make a question. So. Thank you, Jason. It's it's good. Um, like I said, if you guys can attend, we'll learn some good stuff. Brandy, we'll move on to you, Brandy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we are wrapping up our last week of summer school this week. Summer school went well. We had averaged 40 kids kind of come and go around vacations. This year we did do something a little bit different. Um, Candace saw kids throughout the summer on Tuesdays. Went really well. She had a full schedule all day, all summer. And so um, definitely a beneficial deal. Even pick some up through the summer when things came up with families. So I'm glad we were able to offer that um and then yeah we're just getting ready for this next new year letters went out this week you know for the exciting news of who's going to get which teacher mr bartlett hasn't got his yet so he's waiting on pins and needles um but if anybody asks they should be getting them any day now so we're ready to get rolling any questions for brandy thank you brandy <clears throat> Tyler, you want to go next? I would love to. I want to start with why the post office sends our mail in town down to Casper to get back in town. And I just want to know. Anyway, sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's, that's handy. Um, a couple of things they talked about the summer counseling. Um, Nikki Bloom did that too. If you guys remember, that was the ESSER grant that and allowed us to do that this summer. I would say both ladies said it was super beneficial for the kids they saw. We had a couple of kids again today in our middle school, and I think then Nikki wrapped up. Um, the ESSER grant will cover that next summer, um, and then we'll go from there. But I think there's kids in our community that need that support, and it's great that we have those ladies that can do that. Um, I would share in Brad's you know, struggles with uh, staff shortages. Um, so obviously working on um, finding the right candidate for the title math position. Uh, I would give kudos to, to Carrie Manders. She's going to step up and go back to the old ways of teaching sixth grade art for us. So we've got that problem solved. She's done that in the past and she's uh, excited to do that. And that's one of the benefits of where we gave her a little flexibility. She was she was jumping at the opportunity to still be around kids and, and cover where needed. So got that piece covered, still working on title math. Um, but so we'll see where we get there. I do have one new staff member to invite you guys down to come see sometime. Um, but Nikki Bloom has uh, been working the last couple of years to get her therapy dog officially certified, licensed, insured, all those things. Um, so the puppy will start, well, not puppy, four-year-old, you know, he's, in, he's an adult by now, um, but we'll have a therapy dog kind of starting up, staggering in to the middle school. And, and we've done that in the past. And I think if you guys can remember, um, the kids, kids tend to really respond well to that. So I think it's going to be a good thing to have, but so, so yeah, come down and meet the dog sometime, but that'll get going too. Um, and then as Sonia alluded to new student night is Thursday, August 17th from five 30 to six 30. Now that we've been doing this a while, we're just really gearing towards the sixth graders and, and people that are new to us because our seventh and eighth grade kids and parents have kind of got a pretty good handle on things. 
Um, but you guys are welcome to jump in on that. And then the 21st is when we'll do our sixth and ninth grade jump start all day. Um, Don Stevenson is once again going to be firing up the grill for burgers and hot dogs for the freshmen and the sixth graders. And uh, and again, you guys are always welcome to come down and see that because I do think that's a pretty good day for getting our sixth graders into the building. The 21st. Yep. And otherwise, unless you guys have any questions, all the same stuff everybody else said. Busy stuff. So for that, we... turn, turn your mic on, please. For that, were you were you looking for two or just still the one employee? Now, well, so you know, Marty's skill set was unique. I mean, let's you don't see a lot of math math teachers that also dabble in the art pretty well, you know. So um, I think long term for the viability of sixth grade art, we've got to come up with probably a different solution. Whether that's carry, whether that's other, you know ways around it. I think that's what we got to look at. Um, as you guys are aware, and the math support is, is a need, you know, that's Brandy does a really nice job of managing that grant. And we visited about it this summer. You know, it could be reading too. It could be a variety of things. Uh, they did cut some title funding. So there's still some questions to answer that way as far as, okay, how do we, how do we staff that position and get that support for kids and how do we pay for it? And I mean, how many times you guys heard that recently? Um, but yes, we have one opening right now that I hope can can we can find the right person and and provide that support um, with our clientele lately. Uh, that title math position and, and Marnie specifically. I mean, it, it was a variety of things too, where she was providing some support for for students on IEPs, and she's jumping in when we're short on teachers and short on subs, and it's just everybody matters and every role is important. And so when you when you're missing one, it, it's going to be tough. So. So hopefully we'll get something figured out. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Bryce. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm just looking forward to starting a school year fully staffed. That's going to be really nice to have uh, Mr. Thomas joining our team. He's already been in the building. He's the new math teacher. Um, he's already been in the building doing some things, getting his classroom ready. So it's excited to see him in there and, and getting after it. Um, it's funny, I sent out a beginning of the year letter the other day, and so I've received some emails from some students who have already changed their mind of classes they wanted to take in the spring, and uh, and they're excited to come in and, you know, get those adjusted and ready to go. And then I got another email from a kid. He's like, uh, this letter's too early. <laughs> That's, uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. Uh, so there's varying degrees of excitement from the students, of course. Um, today, I just wanted to highlight... Um, Alicia Carey and I went down to new administrators training for the WHSAA. I went two years ago, my first year as the principal, and it's it's a lot of information because they just, you know, throw the book at you the first and you just have to try to absorb as much as you can. And so it was good personally for me to go back with having some experience and background knowledge of using those things a little bit while working with Mike the last few years, but then also for those two gals to be able to um, receive that information, discuss it, and then the two and a half hour drive home. Also, we discussed a lot about what we had learned throughout the day to kind of cement some things and talk about how we were going to apply all those procedures. So it was just a nice training to attend a day down in Casper. Any questions for Bryce? Thank you, Bryce. Thank you. Angie? What you get out of playing sports is so much more about life skills and, you know, just becoming stronger as an individual, learning to deal with adversity, learning to uh, approach and, and challenges and, and taking risks and things like that, you know, and, and the old adage, we learn more from our state, our mistakes and we do our successes is, is certainly true. Um, and I don't know, uh, coach Vaughn, I always, he's, he's like a moral victories. He's not a big fan of, <laughs> None of us are, but our, but right. that's what we've spent the last 15 minutes talking about is, is if you're handed a moral victory by gosh, right. you celebrate it, right? Exactly. And that's exactly right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have an update on the 100A. Um, when I presented the budget that I told you that the formula was broken, so it wasn't, they still do not have an update. Um, <laughs> the email I received today, it is, they do not have a time frame for the review and the certification process. It is unknown when they'll receive everything. So, um, but they will not, um, we won't get a letter if we're late. Oh, so, yeah. They should get it. I thought that was nice. So, so I, 
Not really fun for first time. So are we going to send us the amount of money, any amount of money that you put on the budget and send down to them? Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> eventually. Yeah, eventually. Too. Yeah. Okay. That was all I had. So. Any questions? Thank you, Andy. Bo, did you have anything? Um, the, yeah, just real quick. Um, I guess I just kind of want to give a shout out to my crew, um, Mike Peterson and uh, Marion Gonzalez. Um, again, I'm super blessed to have them. They um, they do our, our summertime is truly our busiest time in tech. Um, and I think when teachers roll in, we'll be good to go. I'm, all computers are imaged, boards are updated, printers are clean. Um, they did a great job. Uh, switched out carts. We got brand new charging carts. Um, did a great job. Um, other than that, um, just kind of finishing up a couple projects. Um, adding doors and cameras. They should be here Saturday, Sunday. Um, as we said out there, we actually thought about another door I might add to. So it's just, it's a never ending project. So, um, server project is done. I was super happy with that. So, so right now our servers have, uh, five years of coverage we got both active and passive um uh protection so we're sitting really good there and uh booster uh cell phone booster and radio booster um signed off they have everything we're just waiting on equipment to come in so i'm assuming we'll probably knock it out over a weekend i got to talk to rick at rick's electric and we'll just we'll get it in when we can so once that happens we'll have better um, cell service and radio service out at the elementary. So, and really, that's all I have. Unless you have questions, any questions for Bo? Thank you, Bo. Thank you. Are you ready for a report, Casey? <laughs> you look kind of like a deer in the headlights, there. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, scores have started, Thank like I said. <laughs> so. However, uh, next week we do plan the, the student council. Uh, we're going to have an executive meeting to kind of figure out like how we really want to run things and to get all of the, the basics down, so to speak. So that way there's no issues when school does start up. And then that following uh, later in the week, sometime that weekend, uh, we plan to get as many as the of, as many of the council members together to have a sort of like a barbecue kind of thing. Just like get to know everybody. Everybody knows everybody's faces, and then uh, hopefully we can start school up all smooth. Get some meetings going, and have a successful year so that from there. But this is step one, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you. You weren't ready for that, were you? but you did a good job. And just know that there's a quiz after every board meeting. No, there's not. But uh, uh, I will call on you every meeting you're here. So just, and if you don't have anything, that's okay. Jason, did you have? If you could, I'd like a, a list of the council members for. Yeah, appreciate it. Brad, I guess you're up. Is it? Yeah, Brad, go ahead. Any questions for Casey first? Okay. So um, I'm going to sort of piggyback on the back of Bo. So it's been an interesting summer, to say the least. Um, I would first want to thank everybody, um, whether it be transportation, whether it be everybody in this room, uh, and especially this person to my right, um, it is personnel changes almost weekly. And so, you know, it, it, it is easy to drive over the overpass and say, you know, when in the world did they stop doing the football field and turn it into a clover patch? I get that. Um, I heard it. Um, but, you know, uh, John Perell and, and Jim Boehner have pitched in. Uh, every third day, they're mowing the football field. Um, and it's people like that. And truly, Bo said it, but I mean, I've I've asked Bo to be a cop because we lost some equipment and I needed some video equipment pulled up. He's on vacation and he does that. And every one of them have done the same. Um, I know Angie has had a growing period 
and it will continue. She does not realize that it really doesn't get much easier. Um, but with that, I think if everyone can understand going into this school year, that if we can all do whatever we need to do for kids together, it will work. If you try to do this in isolation, you will leave the profession fairly quick because um, it is too much to take on with one person. Um, so with that, um, you know, I'm just, I, I mean, I'm happy to have those that are here. I think we're blessed with those that are here. Um, and really, I am excited. Um, it's my 31st year here. Um, and I can hardly wait to see what the chair has to share with, with he left us last time with the best days of our lives, or this is the best day of our life. And so he's got to sort of top that one. So with that, um, again, if you need anything, reach out to CeeLo. She can find me. Um, uh, we are going to be doing a wide range of different tasks just to make sure it works for students and it works for staff. Um, I don't think there'll be a lot of office time sitting there wondering what has to happen next. So with that, thank you for the jobs that you do and the time that you commit for our young people and our staff as well, because I know that your job doesn't stop either. So thank you. Any questions for Brad? And thank you for the compliment. Does any board member have any reports? Yes. Anna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, WEPT, uh, WEPT is the Wyoming Educators Benefit Trust, and that's where we get all the entrance uh, products for our district. Um, our our WEPT board is meeting Monday, and the big thing we're doing is I think we're going to spend about three hours learning more about pharmacy benefit management, and I would trade you that for three days of WHSA because it is one deep and broad and very dry topic, but we are trying to figure out if, if we can take that over and not pay someone else to do it which would be a benefit to our members. So we will power through that and and uh, get that done. We're hoping to make a final decision on that by the end of the year. Any questions for Dana? Thank you, Dana. Jason, you have anything? Dana? Okay. Let's see him. Can I back up just a second? Sure. I just thought of something. There, there are a couple of people, and, and I know there's more than this, but Don Williams and Brandy Gregory, Brandy Evenson, um, they sort of jumped out of their comfort zone and, and decided to help with maintenance. And the rock work that, that you see here, once the sidewalk's done, it'll be completed. But throughout the elementary school and that, um, it really does look nice. And I'm here to tell you that was a miserable event. And I think they would make every motion in the world to say that the summer help next year probably starts off at 120 an hour <laughs> because $10 an hour just doesn't cut it. Um, but it's people like that that really, um, you know, if they don't do that, it doesn't get done, guys. It just, that's the way it happens. So, um, there was a couple of days it was hot and it was humid and they were hand picking rocks to put in there. And, you know, the guy thing is you just run over there with a bulldozer and push it and, and then you shuffle a couple and it's okay. That's not what they did. So that's why it looks much better than if a guy would have done it. So I want to make sure that that gets the recognition. And the other one is summer. Um, this was my first time where I got to have the new bookmobile. Thank you. And the good thing is it was new. However, I've never had to jumpstart a bookmobile because uh, a bookmobile has a generator on top of the starter. So poor Adam has to come out because moi can't figure out how to jumpstart the god darn bookmobile. Um <laughs> And when he did it, it was very gracious. But um, again, one of those little things that go a long ways for kids. Um, 
and and it, it's just I think in, if you don't really take a time to look at all the offerings, I mean, Tamara summer program, I don't know how many kids are involved in that thing, and the amount of stuff and planning, um, it is pretty amazing what what we can offer. And I don't know if we often celebrate those kinds of things, but I I would be remiss in, and I, if I left anyone out, I apologize. But those were the two that. I last saw kneeling in front of the door. Is there anyone else that was with that group? I miss anyone. Thank you, Brad. We'll move on to future agenda items. Anybody have a future agenda item? Oh, well, that was easy. <laughs> so, a discussion on the WSBA regional meeting. Um, I guess the request kind of is to possibly move our August 30th meeting to August 23rd so that we can go to the WSBA regional fall meeting. Um, does anybody want to do that? Yeah, we will need a motion to do it. I'll make a motion. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to change our meeting date from August 30th to August 23rd. Uh, and we probably need to advertise that in the paper or wherever. Um, we need a school suburban, Mr. Chair. I don't know. Well, let's vote on it first here. Would be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, any more discussion on it other than the school suburban? All in favor, signify by saying aye. I opposed. Motion carried. How many plan on going to? It's in Gillette, right? At the same place. I'm going probably. Gillette starts at five. Five or five thirty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go visit a friend first, so I won't need a ride. But I plan on. Going. You're going, Jason. Paul, you going? I will have to check. Okay. Billy. Yeah, put me down. Huh? Okay, Billy will go. Shall I? I'm going. Joe. So everybody's going. Paul is a question mark. I don't know about Tina. Because we have to do it. I have to I'll, reserve. The, 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 I'll drive. Okay. So I, drive. Well, I have to drive yeah, because I go from a different direction. Okay, so if that's if you guys want to ride with me, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll make it. I mean, I'll make it work. Okay. Yeah. And I'll I'll yeah. drive. So okay. we won't need a suburban. I can okay. take cars. Okay. I guess not. I'll probably just cut across. I'm going to do. I'll have a suburban one. Are you going, Brad? You're going? 14 with the drug. Okay. okay. Yeah, I have no reason to Okay. And I can take six. Okay. I guess everybody, we just don't know about Tina for sure. We'll be there. Um, and anybody else that wants to go along, <laughs> it's a real exciting meeting. And we really should have ice cream with Jerry clean after and and, Yeah, we got to go. Yeah. It'd be his birthday. That would be, yeah. Pretty close to his birthday, anyone? Every year. One last thing uh, for discussion items is the WSBA Golden Bell Award. I would like to nominate Tom Wright, and I'll do the write-up if if you would like me to do that. But, uh, and I think that's due in October. So if that's okay with the board, I just, okay, I'm going to do that. I have nothing else, I guess. Meeting. I'll call to order the Eastern Weston County Rec Board agenda. Uh, approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. We got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Any recognitions? Seeing none, we'll move on to visitor comments. Oh, go ahead. 
So um, I wish I had it with me, but I don't. One of the topics at hand is um, outdoor recreation with the idea of a better use of the LAK Lake um, because it has been shut down to the motorcraft. A lot of other communities have applied for some grants. Um, a lot of them run it through their rec area, but it basically looks like a little beachfront property where um, some of them rent out um, surfboards, uh, tubes, uh, things of that nature. Of course, we would have to have an agreement with the LAK people, um, but it is something that I know it's it's out there. It's been a, a topic of conversation, and I will just share that the video clip with you. It's a very popular concept um, in Colorado because Colorado is experiencing the same thing with the zebra mussels in the boats and, and that kind of stuff, but trying to look at ways of enhancing um, outdoor recreation since we really don't have an outdoor pool anymore. Although the location is probably not ideal, but um, it's just an idea that I will quote float by you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Okay, moving on. Action items, consent agenda. Consent agenda. Second. I got a motion on the floor, properly seconded, to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Passes. I don't have anything for old business. Anything for new, Brad? I haven't got anything. Okay. Anything for discussion items? Seeing none. Adjourned.